you're going to still use the law of sines to solve the triangle, but today we're going to just focus on ambiguous case, which is called angle side side. What is angle side side? When they give you angle and sides, two sides consecutively, right? So what was the another case that you could not prove the congruency of triangle from geometry? Side, side, side. Actually, yes, it does prove the congruency of triangle. Angle, angle, angle. Remember, if you have same angles, like 60, 60, 60, and you also have what? 60, 60, 60, but they're not congruent, right? Even they have all equal angles. So you could not use angle, angle, angle to prove the congruency of triangle and the other option was what angle side side the bad word remember isn't that how you guys remember it so why first if you understand the concept of it it will make much more sense at the end so please just watch this okay so we don't know the length of this side but we have the fixed angle inside inside we, this angle is not fixed so this side can either swing inwards this way or out like that or it can actually form a right triangle. It depends on the size of this triangle. If this side was exactly the same as the height of this triangle, how many triangle would you get? Yeah, how many triangle can you make out of angle side side? Just one. Right? But if this side was shorter than the height, just like how it looks like now, how many triangles can you form? Zero. If this side was longer than the height, how many triangles can you make? Two, why? You can swing it outwards or this can actually go inwards like this. But this side must be shorter than this side. Here's one triangle, and here's another triangle, too. So I'm going to go over all these cases. So they can, they can be one triangle, two triangle, or none. Okay? So let's look at this handout right here. A lot of times they give you an angle that is greater, less than 90. But if it's greater than 90, you see how this is obtuse? then it makes it actually easier. Why? If it's already open outwards, and if this a, side A, which is opposite to this angle, is shorter than this, then you get how many triangles? No, none, right? This is not long enough to close this figure, this triangle, so you get no triangle. What if? Again, angle is greater than 90 of twos, and if you have A greater than B, you'll get one triangle, okay? One triangle. Because the angle is already greater than 90, so you cannot swing it outwards, okay? And here, if your angle is less than 90, and if you have this side longer than this side, we can call it angle A here, side A and B. If this side is longer than B, you're going to get one triangle because it has to swing outward. Okay? And if angle A, I mean side A is shorter than B, you have to compare with its height. How do you find the height? You can use, this is opposite your height. Hypotenuse is given, so you can use OH, which is sine of A equals to opposite, which is your height, and hypotenuse, which is your B. So in order to find the height, you can multiply by B. So it will be always length of this side times sine of this angle. That's how you find the height. Okay? So once you get the height, you have to compare with the second side. 
And if the second side is shorter than the height, can you close it? No, so you get no triangle. What if the height is exact same length as A? It will form a right triangle, so you get one triangle. Okay? What about here? If this side is shorter than B, but longer than the height, then you get two triangles. Why? You can have this thing outwards, like this, or this can go inwards, like that. You see how it has still the same angle side side? So for this case, you have to solve for both triangles, both possible triangles. So when you use law of sine, they will usually give you this angle B. But when you're solving for the second possible triangle, we call this now B prime. And how do you find this angle right here? As you can see, this A's are same side, right? So you see how it is isosceles triangle. So this side B, I mean angle B is same as this angle. So then you do 180 minus your first B to get the second B all the time. It's always 180 minus first B to get the second B. Yes. It's isosceles triangle, so these two angles are the same. And they're linear pairs, so you subtract from 180. It's the same side we are looking at. A you can swing in or out. Okay. So let's look at some of these cases. Number one. So solve triangle ABC if B is 50, A is 33, angle A is 132. Sometimes they might give you angle B or C. Doesn't matter. We're going to just go ahead and put our angle on this corner right here. Okay. One, oh, it is actually greater than 90. So it's one of the easier case, right? This is 132. And side A is opposite to angle A. So this is 33 and this is 50. And this has to be then angle B. I mean angle B, right? Because B, side B is opposite to angle B. So it's these two cases at the bottom, right? So when A is shorter than B, can you have a triangle? So it's this case right here, right? So what would you say? You would say angle A is greater than 90. And A is shorter than B. You see it? So it can't, it's too short to close this triangle. So therefore, you have no triangle. This case right here. No solution. So once you get no solution, it's easy because you're done. You just got to explain why there no, there's no triangle and you can move on. Okay. Second, number two. What do you think? Number two. How many triangles would you get? So... Here, actually, as you can see, this is not an ambiguous case. You have angle, angle, side. I don't know in which order, but there will be only one triangle, right? This is not an ambiguous case, right? So you don't have to check how many triangles you have for this case, all right? So I'm going to skip number two. There is one triangle. What about number three? How many triangle do we have for triangle ABC? If C, see, it is less than 90, so 17 degrees. This case, this is C. And A, so this must be A, 10. Here's angle A. And here's 11. So which case is this? So we can still re call this as, this is what? Angle A. Then this is A and B. 
side A and B. So this is longer. So there will be how many? Which case is it? Look for it. A is greater than B. So how many? There will be one. In order to have two triangles, this has to be greater than height and less than this. It has to be between these two. So for this one, there will be one triangle. Why? Because C is less than 90. And 11, so for this case, C is less than A. No, C is greater than A. You see how this is? Greater? So there's one triangle. And you solve the exact same way as how we did before. Since you have a pair of angle inside, you can use law of sine. Okay? But again, I'm going to skip solving it. I like to show you how to solve for two triangles. Okay? Does it make sense how you have one triangle? Let's look at number four. Yeah. But as you do more of these, Rather than just remembering these, you, you can compare the sides and you will see what happens. Yeah, let's look at number four. As I told you, this is one of the hardest lessons. What about here? Angle A is 63. Opposite is 17. And here's 18. So this is A, shorter than B. You guys see it? This is shorter than B. So how many triangles can we have? No. We only know up to this point. So it could be none, one, or two. It's this case right here. A is less than B. So what's our next step then? Yes, you have to find the height. How do you find the height? Your height is hypotenuse times sine of 63. Yes. Yeah, it's second side, angle side side. The second side here we call it A. This is B. So what is the height of this triangle? Plug into the calculator, what do you get? 18 times sine of 63. So 16.038. So your height is 16.038. So compare with this side, right? If this side was shorter than the height, you get no triangle. If these two are equal, then it forms a right triangle, so there was one triangle, right? If this was longer than the height and shorter than the side, then there are two triangles. So in this case, you have two triangles. So height is less than 17, right? Which is your A. Therefore, you have two triangles. Then, now, you have to start solving for those two possible triangles. So, the first triangle, you do exactly the same as how you will solve the other, any other triangles using law of sine. So, here, first triangle. So, it will be the acute triangle, swing outward. So, here's angle A, 63, 18, 17, and here's B and C. So you need to find angle C, angle B, and side C. So what do you do? You use a law of sine, meaning you have to have a matching side and angle. 
So sine of 63 degrees over 17, sine of A over A equals to, I'll do sine of B first, right? Because you have a side B, which is 18. And you solve for B, cross multiply. So 18 times sine of 63 equals to 17 times sine of B, divide by 17 from both sides. So I get 18 sine of 63 per center, divide by 17. You get 0 0.9, 0.943. So 0.943 equals to sine of B. Then what do you do to solve for angle B? Inverse sine, take inverse. So then B equals 2, and on your calculator, please do not use rounded answer, just use exact answer. So second sign, and copy the previous answer, second negative. So then you get 70.634, 70.634 degrees. So that's angle B, 70.634 degrees. And now what do you do to find the angle C? Yeah, subtract the other two angles from 180. So angle C is 180 minus 63 angle A and B, which is 70.634. So what do you get? 46, yeah, 46.366 degrees, and now you have to solve for the side C. So for the first triangle, you do exactly the same thing as what you will do with the other problems. So now go back to your sine of A over A equals to sine of now C, which is 46.366 over C. So cross multiply. So C times sine of 63 equals to 17 times sine of 46.366 divided by sine of 63 to solve for C. Sine of 63, so 17 sine of 46.366, divided by sine of 63, so you get 13.809, so 13.809. So it took a while to solve this triangle, right? So are we done? No, we are done with the first triangle. Do you guys see it? This was the first possible triangle. Now, how would the second triangle look like? So you had a fixed A, angle A, and this side 18. Now what happens to this side, it can swing inwards. Do you guys see it? It will become a very small obtuse triangle. Like this. So now here's your B prime, we call it prime. And this is our C prime. But the angle measure of A, 63, inside 18 and 17 did not change. But you see how you can have this obtuse triangle? This angle is not fixed, so you can either swing it outwards or inwards. So if you swing this inwards, it will, you will get a triangle on this side. There are two possible triangles with this ambiguous case. Because 
this length was longer than the height or shorter than this first side. So then, what do you do? You have to start with B prime. How do you find B prime? Remember, this two triangles, this is side A and side A. So these two are isosceles triangle, meaning this is angle B. This is angle B. Now, if you're looking for this angle right here, right, which will be 180 minus your first B all the time. This angle will be always 180 minus your first angle. So it will be 180 minus, what was B? B? 70.634. So you get 109.634. Three six six degrees. Okay, always. The second triangle will take less time than the first one because B you can easily subtract from one eighty to find. What about angle C then? C prime. It will be what? One eighty minus the other two. Sixty three is angle A, and our new B is 10.109.366. And usually angle C prime becomes very small, right? As you can see, you see how small this will be. This side gets also very tiny. So what do you get? What's 180 minus 63 minus 109.366? 7.6. Are we done? No. You need to find side C now. So how do you find side C? You use law of sines again. So sine of 63 angle A over 17 equals to sine of C prime, which is 7.634 over length C. So cross multiply them. So C times sine of 63 equals to 17 sine of 7.634. Then divide by sine of 63. Divide by sine of 63. So your C prime actually, right? Length prime. Becomes 17 sine of 7.634. Three, four, press enter, divide by sine of 63, becomes what? Yeah, 2.535, 2.535. Isn't that what we expected? It will be very short, very tiny. Why? Look at your picture. Shouldn't this be very small? All right, look at number five. We are not going to solve for number five, but just tell me how many triangles there are. It would be nice if there is no triangle. One is okay, too, right? But if there are two, it takes quite a long time to solve for both triangles. But for now, just tell me how many triangles there will be. So it's acute, so it is 43 degrees A, and B is 20 B, and A is 11. So it is this case right here, right? So for this case, when this is shorter than B, you have to find the height, right? If this was longer than that, you know it has to swing that word outwards. So there's one triangle, which is this case. But here, 11 is less than 20. A is less than B. So you have to have, find the height. So how do you find the height? It's always the hypotenuse times sine of this angle, 43. What's the height? Twenty sine of forty-three. Thirteen point six four zero. Six four zero. So this is thirteen point six four zero. So now you compare these two, right? 
height is longer than the second side, 11. Therefore, can you close this triangle? No. So there are zero solutions, no triangle.